So, good afternoon, those that are still awake. Um, I want to congratulate you to the big luck you have that you are seeing the document liberation project first time uh, presented in public. We launched today at 13.00 Central European Daylight Saving Time. <laughs> and um, we are going to uh, uh, wash your brain about what we are doing and who we are. So the agenda. So the, the public agenda is to speak about the project and, and give you some boring details about what happened since last, um, last year. And for the hidden agenda, you will have to be careful and listen because it is between the lines and it will be revealed towards the end. Um, how this thing works, okay. So the, the history of the project is that it was launched officially today. And um, uh, how it came to be a group working on file formats within LibreOffice since the beginning um, formed from like 2011 around a Google Summer of Code project uh, that produced LibVisio library to parse and render Visio uh, files. And since the beginning, when this library was still little, we started to feel that we are doing something bigger than LibreOffice and that we are actually opening the file format for the free and open source world. And we were taking it as our mission, as a, as a service of LibreOffice community to the wider uh, FOSS world, because LibreOffice is using an enormous quantity of uh, open source code that we didn't produce. So it was also a good thing to give something back. And uh, this feeling was confirmed because there are many other projects that now use uh, different libraries that we produced, like Inkscape, Scribus, Caligra, uh, some proprietary applications also because we are released under MPL2, so they can use it, but they can they have to give us back the code uh, if they modify library. Um, we came at certain point to a proper scalability issues because there is a hardware limit for an individual that can't produce more than 24 man hours per day. Um, so we realized that there were two possibilities. Either someone will pay us to do this as a, as a day job, uh, which is not extremely easy to achieve. Or we attract more people that is also not easy, but it looks in order of magnitude easier. So, and why also we split from LibreOffice? We are still part of Document Foundation, but we split from LibreOffice proper because we don't want other people to feel that they are they are, they are making a treason to their project because they are contributing to LibreOffice. So we, we extracted these libraries from the very beginning out and now if you need to do something on uh, file formats that are proprietary and they are not open, you can always come to the project and nobody can ever tell you that you are a LibreOffice developer. So. <laughs> Uh, about our project, what we believe, we believe we have beliefs about ownership of documents. We think the documents and their content belong to the creators and not to software vendors. As a second step, we believe that access to content that you own should not be hindered by the fact that an application that is created is out of life or that operating system you are running is not running that application. Um, we believe that uh, truly open and um, open standards are the only long-term solution for uh, document interoperability and preservation of digital content for future generations. And, um, but we also believe that in the intermediary period that might be quite long because we are not determining how long it will be, uh, having a free and open source implementation of, of parsers for file formats that are not documented is the only way how we can assure that we will be able to read them in the future because the open source libraries, you can always look at the code and you can actually from the code understand how the file format is, is, is composed. So, and what is in that case our mission? Our mission is to try to understand the file formats uh, by looking at them in uh, hex editors, in trying to apply brain to them and uh, try to cut them and yeah, all these nice uh, long winter nights activities. And uh, implement parcel libraries for those that we understand enough. 
uh, it means to extract data from them and data we say not only content uh, strict or sensu but also um, formattings positions basically convert them and we also want to be good citizens of ODF ecosystem. Although we uh, actually have generators for other file formats than open document, we generate for all the graphics, we generate SVG. Um, why we settle around open document? Because open document is, is a file format that covers many types of documents. And basically, these are the types of documents that you can find in the wild. You can find spreadsheets, you can find text documents, graphics, you can find presentations databases, although database is not uh, specified in open documents. So now the interesting part finished and we are going to tell you something about the boring details. Valek will tell you something about Oletoy. Okay. Uh, actually, I decided to not uh, take too much of the time to talk about all small details that happened in Oletoy. I chose three most important things, so I will tell two things and show one picture. The first thing uh, which is uh, very important for us, uh, now we understand Adobe PageMaker format and even library was started to implement importer for that. It's for versions 3 to 7 of the format, uh, so once it's done, uh, I believe Scribble team would be able to use it for their application. Second most important thing is that now we have uh, one more contributor to Olitoy, the tool which you use to reverse engineer files. And uh, that's a, a tall, shy guy here, David Tardon. He implemented uh, support for few file formats. So they are listed on the screen. It's uh, uh, software 602, uh, 602 text, uh, Zoner Callisto, also known as Draw, uh, Zoner Zebra, which is predecessor of Callisto, and also a uh, newest version of uh, Apple Keynote uh, 6, pages 5, number 3, which has uh, become binary suddenly. And now, for last thing um, and it's especially for uh, Simon. He asked for a few years if uh, it would make sense to implement uh, binary diff uh, to do all these things. So it was implemented. Um, it's actually uh, at the moment on the screen two dialogues. Um, in the middle, uh, I don't know if I can use something like uh, no cursor. Okay, well, um, there is a small dialog which allows you to select which parts of a file you are going to compare and when it's generated with a bigger thing. It shows uh, here I only have two things. Uh, uh, orange is uh, the bytes which are different between two files or uh, two parts of the files and green is where you need to add something. Yesterday we successfully used it for some of our um, reverse engineering activity and also it could be blue if you need to add something on the left side. Um, that's all my boring details and now I'm giving it back to Friedrich for real boring details. <laughs> So, very quickly, new libraries. So, we added some new libraries since last year. Uh, David, he, he produced a library that is called Lip Etoniek. Uh, if you want to know what it supports, you can read it from the other side. And um, it supports keynote documents, and we are extending support from numbers and pages, so the free and open source software will be able to open those funny Apple documents. Uh, another one is Lib eBook that supports the host of eBook file formats, uh, parses different flavors of HTML and imports them into a normal document, text document model. Lib Freehand, we started the library, we already have wireframes, but we are not shouting so much about it because we don't have yet the fields. So it's a, it's a library that parses Freehand file format, is one of the most funny file formats that we've ever seen. Um, and uh, not reverse engineered, but still it was quite fun to do around Christmas. We, we told ourselves how, how it is possible that we can't open Abbeyword documents. So I told myself that in the, it started to be dark early in the evening, so uh, we wrote lib a, B, W, that is, now we can load uh, documents of our cousin, so. And there are more libraries coming if, uh, if we are still alive. Um, we added new document types in the API, so before we were able to convert graphics and convert text documents, but we realized that we will want to do some more things, so we added APIs for representations of uh, 
presentation documents that were we first thought that actually the draw, drawing and presentation will have similar APIs, but presentations have some things that drawings they don't have. So we had to basically make another another file model. Uh, I don't see. Um, <laughs> so, so, and uh, we extended it also to the spreadsheet. So now we have four document formats. But it's not very interesting for LibreGraphic because we, we were always supporting graphics. Uh, we split these libraries. We have a library that it's called libodfgen. It's a library that takes these document models. It's the document models are basically callbacks uh, that that the libraries are calling, and you, you can make generator. We can generate from these callbacks uh, documents. We have this generators, uh, generator for ODF, and uh, yeah, since Fiamke was showing me those numbers that I don't understand, I will try to go a little bit faster. And we, um, we, we made something that we called Lib Revenge. It's nothing with revenging, although we say that uh, Lib Revenge is, is sweet, but um, it's, uh, it's from reverse engineering. Um, so uh, LibRevenge, basically before all these all this APIs that were embedded in the first library that we produced for the type of document, like graphic APIs were in libwpg. Uh, that was the first library that we used for graphic. Uh, we, are, we are doing quick ones. Ah, uh, OK. <laughs> I would be really surprised if someone was not hearing me. Uh, my wife, she has to put the, the part in her ears so that she can be quiet a little bit. So, uh, so basically, we we extracted the APIs plus a common types in a in a library, so that, for example, a graphic um, application doesn't have to introduce libwpd, that is a library that parses WordPerfect documents just to have some types, and that's this basically created a nice structure. Uh, we have we have we have some stream interfaces in this library so that uh, again is C plus plus library so you have C, you have you have uh, uh, purely uh, purely uh, virtual interfaces that you have different implementations um, and uh, you have generators we generate several file formats from these APIs like uh, SVG there is an exception this this SVG generator for drawings it's in the main library because we were using we were producing uh, SVG, uh, for example, for Inkscape since uh, LibVisio started to exist. So we didn't want to split it in an optional library uh, if it's basically needed for for applications. And uh, yeah, uh, I will I will upload it to uh, to SlideShare so that you can go through it and. Um, internalize all this crap that I wrote here. Um, what is the advantage of the design? The parcel library is independent and self-contained. It's easier for filter writers. Uh, it's easier to find where the APIs are. And we also avoid sucking in unrelated libraries. And it's also uh, a considerable reduction of code duplication, which is good. And it's because it, it creates less risk to have bugs that are fixed in one library are still existing in another. And also for a, for a, for someone who wants to write a library parsing a document, um, it is faster because the APIs exist, the type exists. You can just start to write your first function and then, then go through it from it. Um, okay, now as, uh, as I see in your faces, you are all excited and you want to be part of this. So what, how you can contribute? You can develop code. It's very easy. Uh, you can contribute to one of our existing libraries or start a new one and we are there uh, to, to advise, to guide you, to pat your back, to, uh, to Facebook about what you are doing and, uh, and everything. Or you can help if you like to look into Hex Editor until you are blind. You can help in understanding and documenting file formats. We use all the toy that Valek he presented because it is much better than to uh, count offsets in GHEX or I don't know how it's called in the other side. Um, or you can prep, prepare sample documents for us because although we have many of these applications, 
Um, I still don't see. Um, we have uh, many of these applications uh, through our MSDN subscription and this kind of things. We don't have everything. I don't have many Adobe applications. So if if we need to uh, understand Adobe file formats, it's good if someone of the of the graphic people has um, an Adobe uh, maybe page maker in design and generates a host of document with uh, atomic features so that we can try to understand how the documents are done. Uh, what is the future? We have some projects that might go through in Google Summer of Code within LibreOffice. Uh, students will be extremely blessed by that because they will be working with outstanding mentors like David, like Valek, like me maybe. And they, they, we have some file formats that are already reverse engineered and now they are ready for straight engineering and they are um, uh, Apple numbers and pages. There is a project for that in Google Summer of Code and we have actually a student who wants to do it so let's see whether there will be a place for him or Adobe PageMaker. We also have a student and we are just seeing whether we manage to push our will inside the project to have this project. So thank you. Uh, you can actually go to our handle of Twitter Twitter. We tweeted a, a nice, okay, nice. We are not designers. We are just zeros in design. But there is a wallpaper that you can put on your computer. There is no virus in it and it's not calling home. So, or you can check our website, uh, documentliberation.org, and see everything that I said here with Valek, um, but in more intelligent. So, thank you. So, well, last Fister is uh, setting up. We uh, have time for one question. Mm. Uh, my question is about uh, w uh, WMF and EMF, uh, the Windows Metafile formats. Uh, would would those uh, also fit into this model, or uh, are you planning to leave the, the support for those in Open Office uh, uh, as completely separate? Open what? Uh, in in, uh, in LibreOffice, oh. sorry. <laughs> um, okay. Microphone. Ah, to the microphone. <laughs> so uh, we know that there is a big demand for WMF and EMF. Um, the problem is that it's not very easy to extract the code from LibreOffice. Because in LibreOffice for EMF and WMF is not a converter code, but it's a renderer code. And it's the design of this is extremely intelligent. So it's quite it takes the it takes the, the the records and it channels them into some file format and it puts them to the renderer and the renderer renders it. Uh, I have skeleton of EMF plus library. Uh, there is specification for it. So provided that someone would be interested to help with it, we could have mentoring bandwidth for it. But I see that there is a, some support, so f it's more fun for us to open something that nobody ever was able to open a uh, load for the while. OK? Thank you very much. More questions? Wait, wait. Uh, before we go into a, a second bonus question, uh, we're looking for a small HDMI, mini, mini HDMI. Mini or normal to be converted. Can anyone provide one? No, it's not one. Okay, so your question. It's the same like mine. One more. 
Uh, at some points, I try to reverse engineer some uh, binary file format. Uh, it was like for a uh, lighting design li uh, lighting design program. So uh, I tried to get some information about how to reverse engineer and how to reason about binary file formats. And I failed to find proper documentation or maybe books and stuff. Uh, can you guide me about something? Okay. Oh, I need that. <laughs> so the question is how to do it? Uh, okay, well, uh, for me it started as uh, take a binary file, uh, make a binary file or take it from the source because at that time I did not have access to Visio, so I asked my friends to send me files with uh, some specifications. Make uh, small changes, save a file, look for differences. That's why uh, Nomis was asking for div, right? Because it uh, seems to be natural to f try to find differences in two files where you know what difference should be. And no, when did you okay, if it's uh, difference here, that should mean uh, this and that. And I've used Gnumeric as a tool for storing all, all this information. Surprisingly, the guy who used uh, Olitoy to make uh, Yamaha YEP file converter uh, also was using spreadsheets for that. And once I found that it's not, um, uh, the performance of this, this process is too, uh, too low, I've just made an application which looks like a hex editor on steroids. Right. And when you do that, so you just open files and uh, there is no magical thing that will allow you to open file and say, oh, okay, I know, this one is this, this one is that. And it so just comes with experience. When you work with some file format, uh, suddenly you will find out that you open it, look on it, and say, okay, well, this one is 8 bytes IEEE 754 uh, fraction. Yeah, normally, normally what you do, you know that a uh, file starts at the beginning, so you look at at uh, f four four byte, uh, four, uh, eight bytes uh, integers, and you try to see whether some of them, in whichever endian, they can point to something within the document, and then you try to go there and try to see whether there is some sense, and you you try by by errors. Yeah, that's why it's good for long winter evenings. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So we.